Julio, right? Uh, What's going on? What's up, man? Uh, what are the emotions now, just a couple days ahead of uh, another fight here in Madison Square Garden? Dude, it's always so exciting fight at home. Number one, you don't have to travel. So I'm literally like 25 minutes from here, which is great. Got trained right away. Can only go back and forth between here and the hotel. You know, I mean, uh, the hotel in my home. But it's great. You know, but it's still to the end of the day, it's, it's, it's fight time. So whether I travel, whether I'm home, it's like it, it's time to fight. Did you feel like there was unfinished business here in Madison Square Garden, given how the last fight went? There, there is unfinished business here um, because I'm looking to get the, you know, my three Ws. You know, I got my uh, my win in the Golden Gloves boxing here. Um, I got I did a Glory kickboxing fight here, which I won, and now I'm looking to get a UFC win here at the Garden. So those are my big uh, three Ws right there. So I need to, you know, I'm looking to get that UFC win so I can say I won in boxing kickboxing and MMA at the Garden. Michael Chandler was in here earlier and he said that fighting in the Garden makes you kind of want to fight a certain way because the building shakes when the fans get excited. Is How, how true is that considering you fought here multiple times? It's very true. It's very true. He's not wrong. That's how it is. You know, look, this is the this is the Mecca. This is where the mo some of the major biggest fights in the world happened and uh, when people come in here and you see people thrown down, swinging left like that, Trust me, this place starts to shake with the crowd roaring. And the, your matchup against Montel, what did you make of the, his, his skill set when they brought your name, his name to the table? How, were you excited about this matchup? Absolutely. You know, one, I get a, I get a veteran in the, in, the, in the game. He's been around. I feel like, you know, he's kind of one of these guys that's flown under the radar. But I also, like, you know, he ha I don't know if he, he hasn't fought in, like, in, a, in a little bit. But no matter what, he has a strong skill set. And, uh, you know, what, the first thing I said, I'm like, man, I got another tall guy. I get all the six foot, six foot people, but it uh, doesn't matter. I was ready. I'm like, I'm excited. I got to fight because before that, I was actually looking to fight in Long Island, and then that that didn't happen. Then I was like, I was like, I'll travel to Paris to go fight, and that didn't happen. They're like, all right, we got somebody for the garden. I was like, got Montel Jackson. I'm like, let's freaking do it. I'm excited. And then unrelated to your fight. Uh, Early, uh, also on this card, this might be Frankie Edgar's last fight uh, in his MMA career. Do you have any memories of Frankie? Were you a fan growing up at all? Oh man, when I, when I used to fight in the in the regional circuit, I, I saw him all the time. You know, like I, uh, you know, he he was there every single time I would fight in the regional circuit in Jersey and like in ring combat. And you know, I would always talk to him. I watched him. I think I watched him do one of his last fights in ring combat before he got called to the UFC. And just following his career and what he's done, it's amazing. I get to, you know, witness his last fight in the UFC. You know, like you know, this dude's a legend, right? And always coolest dude ever. Julio, I, I know in a recent interview you said your opponent he likes to lull his opponent to sleep and then he attacks. How important is it for you to press the action so he can't do that? It's very important to press the action on him. Um, he does. I feel he does lull people to sleep. Um, I know he's got a, a strong wrestling base. He's got solid jiu-jitsu, but his striking is so long that if you fall asleep, you know, you might realize, you might think you're at the distance that you need to be to be out of range from him, so he can't hit you, but he's actually closer than you think. So you have to be, you know, on your toes with him, especially also if you're trying to close the distance on him that you don't drop your guard and leave any openings for him. Uh, just over here. Um, your last fight, obviously, you missed weight by half a pound. What kind of corrections have you made this time around to make sure that doesn't happen again? I made, uh, I made the, the details that I needed to fix. Those little corrections were important. Um, also, the last time, you know, like I said, it's, it's my fault, but, like, you know, we ran out of time. It was either the fight doesn't happen because I don't make the scales or, you know, I take, I take the L on that and, you know, give up whatever I have to give for my purse for the .5. I'd rather the fight keep going and, you know, it sucks because, like, it's, like, it's professionalism. So, you know, I hold myself accountable for that. So I fixed up the major details I needed to be fixed up and we're ready to roll. And Montel hasn't been finished so far in his pro career. So how do you see this fight unfolding? What do you think you can expect to see from him? He gets to, he gets to expect to see, like, a... A much better version of who we are, say, a much more uh, free version of who we are, say, a uh, little more than what you saw when I fought uh, Daniel Santos in, in Jacksonville. And look, I'm looking to just get my hand raised in victory, so 
whether it goes to a submission, uh, a knockout, a decision, doesn't matter. I'm looking for that win. Over here in the back, uh, you, you talked a little bit about the energy of fighting at MSG. So I got to ask, what's going to be your walkout song on Saturday night? Always go with my Mark Anthony song, right? Vivir mi vida. Awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. You mentioned that it's just a nice quick drive from home. What's the best way to get here then from your house? BQE, how do you get here? I literally could just take the LIRR and I'm right in front of my apartment. <laughs> also, it's a public transportation. Yeah, or just take an Uber if I don't want to deal with the train and wait for the time. That's it. Carrying all the equipment on the train, not a problem? No, I actually, like for this, I took an Uber and they literally cost nothing. So I was just like, all right, let me get this Uber. I'll be in the hotel easy. And then after my fight, go back to Flushing, have some uh, Korean barbecue at uh, Cast Iron Pot. <laughs> so I know you're a New Yorker. It's probably great to fight in your backyard, especially post-fight. Like, what's like your go-to when you're done? If you get a win, a loss, whatever happens on Saturday night, what are you doing after the fight? Korean barbecue <laughs> and Flushing. You go to the spot, man, and Cast Iron Spot is literally like 20 minutes from here. And guess what? All you can eat, all you can eat. So I know Trezano's on the card as well. It, was he like your main training partner for this camp? Him and I, well, I have a, a, a southpaw. I'm fighting a southpaw, so I had a, I did a lot of work with some, some boxers, lefty boxers, and, you know, like I had a, this uh, Albanian uh, wrestling champion, this is Vilson, you know, who's an up-and-comer as well, and he's been helping me work. He's also a lefty, so been getting a lot of lefty work, and Trezano has a, an orthodox fighter, but... You know, Trezano is also tall, like Montel. So sometimes we would spar, sometimes we would grapple, and we would give each other this, like the look of the, our opponents. But I also had a lot of lefty work in here because I don't get a lot of lefties. Oh, for sure. Now, so Tiger Shulman is one of the staples, if you will, in combat sports on the East Coast. Who's the next guy? There's been you, Jimmy Rivera, Lyman, you know, Shane, everybody. Is there anybody that's on the UFC radar, like right on the cusp right now? Of course, we got uh, we we have. Two up and comers. One, his name is uh, Rob Vericchio. He's three and zero. He's looking to get, I think, like two more wins and then probably go to the contender series. Uh, Monshare Kara, who is world renowned jujitsu champion, he's a four and zero right now. And then we have uh, Solomon Renfro, who's also, you know, like he's he's like a UFC Fight Pass uh, superstar right now. He's looking to get in there. He actually said, you know. Anybody falls through at 170, he's like, oh, I'm there. I'll cut the weight and be ready to go. And we have a bunch of out counters. Uh, this kid, uh, Ryan Burgos, Shane Burgos' little brother. You guys know how crazy Shane is. And then you got his little brother who's also just like as crazy and hit as him. It's, it's wild. It's how amazing the, the talent is growing. And then we have another kid, Christian McCauley, a bunch of up and comers. So expect them to come up real soon. All right. So Saturday night, we're going to get some Korean barbecue. Exactly. All right. Talk to you soon. My man. Uh, over here. Hi, how are you? And welcome back to New York. Obviously, you're a resident, so <laughs> welcome fighting in front of your hometown crowd. Um, obviously, you've been used to a New Jersey, New York crowd fighting for Lou Neglia and Ring of Combat. Uh, how do you describe the energy of fighting in front of a New York crowd as opposed to fighting everywhere else? Everybody gets rowdy. Everybody gets rowdy. <laughs> you know that New York attitude. People get rowdy. People probably start fights in the in the in the stands, doesn't matter, but it's just electric. It gets you excited to fight. It's a beautiful crowd. Welcome exactly. back home. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>